Be honest with me. You were cruising around, looking at studio porn. You saw one of these things behind me, didn't you? One of these little diffusion boards. You said, yeah, that's what I need. That's what I need to make my mixes sound real fat, real warm. And then you got it in your head, you go, I'm gonna go buy one of those. Yeah, yeah, you did. But you remembered, as you're looking up on Reverb, you can't spend $700 on this thing. You got, you got a car payment to make. You got mouths to feed. You're saving up for that API channel strip, huh? Yeah? Yeah, that's right. You're saving up for the new uh, Waves bundle. <laughs> yeah, I know you. But hey, you clicked away. You go, ah, it's a pipe dream. Ah, I can never have one of those. They're too expensive. Who's got $700? Who can afford to ship a 30 pound piece of wood through the mail? Not me. No. So you clicked away, maybe. Or maybe you got desperate. Maybe you got desperate. You go, it's just wood. <laughs> I can make wood. <laughs> and you find yourself here. I'm going to tell you the honest truth, the real truth. 100%. You can do this. 100 bucks, one afternoon, all the liquid nails that you can sniff. Shh. Just watch. All right, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a two foot by two foot piece of half inch plywood. Don't go with the quarter inch because that thing's going to flex harder than a bodybuilder at a steroid competition. You're going to need nine eight foot pieces of two inch by two inch select pine. And you're going to need two cans of liquid nails and a caulk gun. The last couple of things you're going to want to pick up are a 50 pound hanging kit and some sandpaper if you don't already have some laying around the house. And that's it as far as materials go. So take it all back and get cutting. As you can see, we've got the chop saw out and we're cutting this in a couple of different sizes. I started out with one and a half inch cuts and went up in half inch increments all the way to four inch cuts. So you're gonna have sizes that range from one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, all the way up to four inch cuts. Now with such a soft wood, you're gonna get a lot of splintering and the best way to get that splintering off is to run that across a sander. I didn't have a sander on me, so what I did was I just took a piece of sandpaper and really lightly sanded it as flat as I could along my hand or along my knuckles so that I didn't round the edges over and just got that splintering off. Now if you have a sander, a hand sander, any type of sander, it's gonna make this job a lot easier. If you don't though, this honestly only took about 45 minutes to an hour to do. So once you've got 256 pieces of wood cut and sanded, take it all back in, break out that liquid nails and start assembling. Now when I first started assembling, I made the mistake of gluing this up with a thin coat of liquid nails. That's not what you want to do at all. What you really want to do is lay out a nice thick bead and use that thick bead of liquid nails almost like a base. So having that base is going to make it so you don't have to press so hard against the other rows of wood. If you do press hard against the other rows of wood as you're assembling this they're gonna slip off the back end you're gonna find yourself constantly readjusting this so once again get a nice thick bead of liquid nails and then firmly but gently put each piece of wood on row by row now the only other piece of advice I would give is the closer you get to the end the more conscious you're gonna to want to be of what wood you have left you don't wanna put the same size pieces next to each other. So I found as I got towards the end, I was actually laying out my wood and kind of pre-planning what wood I was gonna put next to each other. So that that final row, I had a plan, I had an idea of what I was gonna do. It made it really simple and made it so I didn't trap myself in having to put five three inch pieces of wood all together. Now I think what would be a really interesting experiment is to, to get a math problem going where you could figure out the minimum number of sizes of pieces of wood that you would need so that as you assembled this, no two pieces of wood would touch each other. So could you get away with three different sizes or four different sizes? I don't know. I'm not a mathematician. I am not even a math musician. Somebody call Vi Hart. Get her on the phone. Vi! We need you, Vi! Anyways, here's what you're going to need to hang this thing. A measuring tape, hammer, wire clippers, a 50-pound hanging kit, and a screwdriver. Drywall screws and a pencil would also be helpful. 
Now I measured out about nine inches from the top of the board to where I wanted my line to go and just took a hand screw and screwed these guys in. Super simple to do, a lot faster than breaking out the screwdriver. You wanna take your wire now, and this is the more difficult part. I've slowed this part of the video down here so that you can see. There's a very specific way uh, that you do your knot with the wire over here. It's in and then across and then through. And then you, you turn that around the wire to make, it almost looks like the, the top end of a hangman's noose. Uh, there's a couple other videos out there that explain how to do this a little bit better than, than I have here. Uh, and they're shot a little bit better. So if you're using this type of kit, I would highly recommend going and searching uh, hanging uh, video, uh, how to hang wire videos out um, before just going off of my recommendation here. And there you have it. You've got your wire on there. You're ready to hang this 28 pound behemoth now the way that i initially did this was with some picture hanging hooks uh let's take a quick look at how that worked out Well, that was a huge mistake. I've actually never had one of those pull out of the wall, so it was a little bit surprising when it happened, but uh, not that surprising. I, I kind of knew that I was playing it a little bit risky when I started doing it. Anyways, we went ahead and stuck in some 50-pound drywall studs in this guy, and, and it's holding just fine now. I think the biggest part was, uh, was getting it hung up. So that's really it. Super simple, super easy to do. If you have any semblance of a workshop, it'll go by that much quicker. Does it make a huge difference in the day-to-day -day how I hear things? I don't think so, but I also don't really think that this is the environment to tell whether or not it's going to make a huge difference. I would really have to have a RTA microphone and run smart and blast some pink noise through these speakers to tell you yes or no. I've spent way too many years in front of really big PA systems to be able to say for sure one way or the other. But all that being said, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, leave them in the comment section below. Any likes are appreciated. If you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.